Good morning guys. Well, it's morning here. Good evening for you guys and absolutely magnificent and brilliant welcome to the uh, the 56th video. So the first video of the second year, the last video of the first year. It's, it's basically the end, my 365 days of consistently posting weekly on YouTube video. That was a very concise title as you can see. Today we are doing a rock crawling vlog as voted by you guys on Twitter. So if you guys are new and haven't ever watched this before, welcome because this is going to be a great video for you to tune in on. Basically a background for me, one year ago this very day I started to post my first video on YouTube where I would make a dedication to post weekly videos. Over that year I have posted a variety of weird and wonderful videos showing you guys or hopefully trying to show you guys the amazing wonderful world of the ocean and especially British rock hauling. I am super super chuffed that I managed to reach my goal and with this being the video that means I've done it for a year which is absolutely incredible and as I go through this this video I will be thanking you guys some more for this like awesome awesome year that I have had making content but to get on let's get on with the uh, exciting stuff for the day where are we well today we are in Stonehaven now I thought it might be a bit poetic to go rock crawling at the same place that I did my first rock crawling vlog but actually I go there rock crawling all the time so I decided to treat myself and go to a fancy rock crawling place now I call it fancy because it's a bit further away and there's a nice harbour that I might treat myself to a nice little sit down in the cafe afterwards as well. And here we have the absolutely picturesque and completely wonderful stone. So I have never been here before. Um, there looks like there is a wonderful section of Rocky Shore coastline just here and this coastline is looking like it's perfectly ready and great to explore and as you can see the weather is looking uh, typically Scottish it was supposed to be raining and miserable today it's just been really hot so I've been layered um, but now the wind's picking up again so we're gonna see what the weather does guys but today is all about just loving the ocean and loving the rocky shore. The reason I loved rock crawling vlogs is that we went down and we found what we found and in the moment I just expressed my love for those creatures and it's always a surprise, you never know what you're going to find. So that's what today is all about. I'm going to be taking you guys back along with me because I've been rock crawling recently, I'm filming for my documentaries and so they've been rock crawling but I haven't done any talking to the vlog so it's great to take you guys along with me and just see what we can find. And I'm going to try and find you guys some really, really awesome stuff. In it's low tide and I always, always get distracted. I think I'm going to pop you guys away so that I don't attempt to film anything. And we're going to head straight out to the lower shore to catch one of the awesome lower shore species are there. And then we'll work our way back in and uh, hopefully find some marvellous marine creatures. I've just been exploring, I should have time-lapsed that. 
Um, there's not a lot of life in it. I can't see fish darting around. I've only seen one hermit crab that was kind of tucked away, but no obvious life. But what is really cool about this rock pool is that it's really diverse with seaweeds, which should not be underestimated and should not just be classed as boring because they are not. So the really cool thing about seaweeds is that they're absolutely gorgeous and different colors and really nice to look at. And they're also different forms and shapes and sizes. And that makes it really, really interesting to even like feel and touch and explore and, and have a nose at. And it also is a really good sign of a healthy shore. So you want a shore to have lots of different seaweeds because if a storm or a disease or something sweeps a rocky shore, then something is going to survive because some one of the species of the many seaweeds that are there will have adaptations to do so. So it's really healthy and really nice to see and also a very summery thing. Uh, seaweeds really bloom in summer and then they'll die off about October and die down ready for winter so you don't see as many of them. So it's a really kind of, despite this very dull day, a really good summer activity that is uh, quite a summery thing to do. So I am very chuffed with seeing a lot of seaweeds but let's keep exploring because there's a lot more we can find. found something so awesome and so amazing and I love 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 when you lift up a rock and there is something completely different there something completely new or something really surprising and that was this absolute gorgeous brittle star absolutely amazing so brittle stars are like starfish like a relative of them but they're really small and delicate and absolutely gorgeous everyone has a different pattern and the pattern is just like really mosaic and, and really kind of like a can you call that animal art deco it's kind of like an art deco animal and the great experience i had i i lifted up the rock and there was this big brittle star like the size of my palm full-on adult kind of size and it instantly started climbing onto my hand and climbed down under a rock to hide away which i think is so cool because not only are we showing this gorgeous and pretty animal we're showing that it's so agile and so quick moving for such what you seem like a delicate thing that looks like it should just sit still and not be able to do that so that was a great experience and the fact that it did that within 20 seconds and 20 seconds of that animal's life can amaze me so much it's why i love rock pooling like how cool are the species here if 20 seconds of their life and i'm like oh it's so cool so that was great and i'm so glad we saw it today because it's a special video so we've got a special guest because it's the first time i've seen that rock pooling because normally they congregate on like seabeds so if you go trawling and trawl up a load of stuff then you just kind of bucket them back into the sea in like almost scoops because there's so many of them so to see an individual in a rock pool is really special and really awesome and brittle stars are a up there favorite of mine to find i just don't find them very often so that is really really cool I just love how protected rocky shores make it. I mean, that, even though today isn't very rough, but it's a bit, you know, a bit rougher than, you know, the calmest of seas. That is just taking a batter in and it doesn't matter, let alone a big giant storm. But here it's just nice and calm and chill. Yeah. I like rock pooling. Have I mentioned that? Ever? No? Hmm. rock pool is kind of what I like to call or kind of class as a very busy rock pool over a long period of time. So all the uh, snails and hermit crabs in here are going to be pretty slow moving. I mean hermit crabs can move slow but most of the time they're you know they don't they're in no rush kind of thing and obviously all the snails are renowned for being slow. But time lapse this and you'll see that it's actually a hive of activity just kind of not at our speed. And the reason we can kind of see that is you can see the trails of all the snails doing their thing even at, at, while they're not doing it. So all those lines on that rock down there are because uh, snails are going along and using their radula which is like teeth which is a really 
strong kind of material that kind of scrapes everything off and they're slurping up all the biofilm and all the stuff that's growing on top of the rocks and as they do so they kind of leave a trail so they're kind of showing basically where they've eaten which is really really cool i'm not sure i'm going to be able to get it but i'm going to try and set you guys up as a time lapse where i explore the other rocks hopefully the reflection is not too bad you know a gopro would be good i should have bought my gopro we should have bought the coat hanger back that featured so before this for any new viewers i used to put a goat pro on the bottom of a coat hanger because I didn't have a selfie stick and move that around rock pools it worked great the unfortunate thing is is I have this camera in this hand and this camera in this hand and unfortunately I don't have a tail or a third arm so I can't really bring three cameras because it would just be too much of a faff but let's see if the time that works lovely insight to that little crab's life and he was even posing those crabs normally run away at the, 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 the smell of danger but that dude was definitely definitely ready for his camera debut there's also quite a i've seen two little squat lobsters now squat lobsters i love but they freak me out because they move like a ninja i've never seen anything on the rocky shore move quite as ninjury and quite as crazy um and they always make me jump even though they're tiny and also impossible to catch uh if i remember self editing this uh try and put in the really blurry footage you've got of a squat lobster jumping through some some sandy kind of sedimenty kind of water i got last time i went rock pulling oh my god something out of a horror film that thing moves to try catch them because they're so beautiful and such awesome things but my god they've got some power they hop they leap they jump they will disappear in a second so i have not yet mastered the art of filming those maybe one day another brittle star yes they're so pretty human i'm gonna get you there's the other crab i don't care i will beat anyone i'm crazy yeah that crab was uh he did not care also weird barnacle injury a bit of blood there lovely you always scrape yourself with barnacles i love them to bits but it's nice you know they like to shred your hands up every time you go rock pulling um and i was filming the crab and i was looking at it leaning over and i almost fell in so i went like this quickly to like not get kit and i knuckled myself on barnacles so that's different to the scrapes 
lovely stinging. There, you know what they say, water is a quick healer, so. Like my Twitter post the other day, is it really a good week if you haven't been treaded by barnacles? I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Oh, this is pink. Look at this. Hello. Wow. Oh, camera strap, how unprofessional. Look at that. That is bright, bright pink. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's ribbed. Wow. It's washed up, so it's not actually attached anywhere. Cool. That is dead pretty seaweed. Bright pink. We'll be consulting the books when I get back. How flamboyant. Good on you, seaweed. Why blend in? Why not? Be as colourful as you want to be. Completely stand out from the crowd. I love it. But how gorgeous are these rock pools? They're so diverse. Like all the colour, all this more pink. All the pinks and the greens and the browns. My bag. Ruining the thing. It's very colourful. It's very stand out against the grey sky. I like it. Good on you, Rocky Shore. Right, this little rock looks good. Should we turn it over? Lobby. It's bridge. There was a little bit of Still desperate for a nudie brand. So, if any of you Rockpool in Scotland or a nudie brand people watching this, can you please let me know tips, tricks, and advice on how to find them? Because I've never found a nudie prank apart from a sea lemon once, not in Scotland anyway, in the wild. I assume they can grow up here. I mean, there's, isn't there nudie brands everywhere? Like, oh, I'm just desperate to find. No, yeah, just a little one. The little ones are so cute. Um, yeah. So, any advice on how to find nudie brands, which are sea slugs? let me know because top of my list apart from an octopus actually that's top of my list <gasps> maybe we'll find one today putting it out in the universe please 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 can i find an octopus or a nudibrant i have to be a bit careful so basically this is all blocking this but there the tide is like way ahead of me i mean i can literally walk straight in and i don't think it will cut me off but I'm going to have to keep an eye on that. Rain! like a hermit crab had like this little snail on it and it was still determined to move and the snail was like no take me with you and it was just like the most clumsiest looking hermit crab that was so fed up with it being on and then this snail fell off and for ages just sat there like oh what do i do now no i don't have my body to run around on it's definitely a hitchhiking snail and a annoyed hermit crab there that was just made for like a clumsy mess which really really did make me laugh <laughs>
so most of the rain has passed or at least briefly so let me catch you up on where we are we found another awesome new species that i have never found before in fact ever i've seen one urchin once on a pontoon in a marina and that was it i was working so i had to just briefly look oh there's an urchin found two urchins they are so unbelievably pretty and amazing and i've always wondered and i'm always been certain that the spikes are like hard but you watch them and they move and the urchins moving and they look really flexible and you touch them like really lightly because they are very spiky and very hard blows my mind yeah uh, just makes just goes to show how different a shore will make because i've never seen urchins anywhere before and it's so cool so awesome 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 find i'm very chuffed they're so pretty and then one of them was open and you could see like the stomach and its little tube feet all feeding stuff to it. Oh, amazing! I last turned you on it's been about half an hour of that absolutely crazy downpour which is just about pretty much cleared up which is nice however during that time I found another fourth new species which was a flatworm which I can't believe is an animal that exists it's just a blob that wiggles um and I think that set my camera into absolute overdrive it was like I can't believe I filmed four new species today and then decided to get stuck in a high speed filming mode but not actually filming high speed now, high speed filming mode is the most energy draining setting on my camera and it froze and the only way to unfreeze it would be to take the battery out which has never happened before and i'm not letting it put a damper on my day because i have had such an amazing time rock calling which is not quite over yet um so <laughs> I couldn't reset it. I couldn't get it to stop trying to film in high speed without recording anything. Or maybe it has, I've just got half an hour of recording of high speed. Anyway, the camera battery died. And it, it's never died before. So I know where the spare battery is. It's in my other rucksack at the top because I brought it with me once right at the start. But this battery here lasts two, three rock pooling trips. I really do charge it up. But most of the time it only gets halfway down. So I didn't actually pack a spare battery thinking that my camera wouldn't freeze and run out of battery. So we've lost our underwater battery thing, which I think is perfectly appropriate for today, actually. If today is an accompaniment of all of the things that to do with the website and, you know, it's a celebration of the entire year, we have had technological troubles throughout the entire, or we've had some technological troubles during the year and, and you know, it just a nice reminder that I can work as hard as I want on learning how to talk to the camera and learning the species but at the end of the day the thing that really matters most about YouTube is having your technology work <laughs> but we've had a fantastic time rock pooling anyway and we'll just go back to old school rock pooling so we're gonna do rock pooling and 
you won't get any underwater shots from now on but I'm going to turn over a few rocks because there's some cool stuff under rocks and you should now it's not raining be able to see it through the water so why not try that so I think but it has not stopped raining since then so I've been hunkered in a cafe for two hours hoping that the rain would pass so that I could go out on the beach and talk back to you guys. So one of the reasons I picked Stonehaven as the place to go is because I knew they had a really nice beach and like broadwalk section. So I knew I'd be able to find somewhere to sit and chat to you guys about what it means for me to have finished this goal of posting a weekly video every week onto YouTube. I am however left in an echoey kind of over alley thing with the view of the hub in the background as the only dry place I can find in the town with a bit of a view. <laughs> so not quite as scenic as I hoped for this moment but I still think I need to tell you how I'm feeling while I'm here before I get on the train because this has meant a lot to me. It really, really does mean a lot to me that I have managed to post every week. But not only that, it has been a lot better and a much greater experience than I could have ever thought. Yes, fair enough, I, I have less than 100 subscribers on YouTube. If we're going by subscriber count or we're going by watch time, compared to millions of hundreds of God knows how many people on YouTube, yeah, sure. I'm not doing that well, but I'm not in it for the success or the numbers. And even from the small amount of numbers that I have, it's been such a great reaction. The, the people I've met over Twitter, the conversations that we've had about rock pooling, and people do things like they draw art and they'll tag me in it because they know I like it. Like stuff like that really massively warms my heart. For people to draw something and think, oh, I know she'd like this because it's a rock pooling creature or, or it's something to do with the ocean and tag me in it to see it is just phenomenal feeling. And it's so great that I'm gathering this community where I can talk about the things I love and share it with people that love it too. And people that don't know about rock pooling are learning some new stuff and I'm just trying to teach everyone as much as I know. And this whole journey has been absolutely crazy for me. It might not make much sense, but when I started doing this on YouTube a year ago, I will cut to that clip now. Walking along, looking like an idiot. Hello. I'm just trying to see if you can see me in my cap. Actually, it's probably just... before actually I was so nervous I hated talking in front of the camera it scared me it seemed like such a daunting task to do and that is totally not the case now I'm super comfortable talking in front of the camera I didn't know how to edit videos I didn't know how to talk to camera I didn't know how to film anything and I didn't think I'd like it that much. I found it really stressful at the start, filming and talking to camera and editing took ages and was really difficult. But then I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with learning how to talk in front of the camera. You know, every time I film a video, there would be little bits where I'd like, oh, you know, if I'd done that, then this bit would have seemed like so much more cooler and so much more dramatic. So next time I do it, I try and incorporate a bit more or I say a bit more or I do, a bit more and the video by video I think I've really like improved from where I first started and also just enjoyed it more because it's such a creative experience and I didn't expect to like the editing and the filmmaking so much but because it is so creative it's just another kind of creative tool that I can now use to share and express stuff and I think that is so good and been such a great thing for me to learn. And the other difference it's made, it has made a massive difference to my life. If I am editing a video, filming a video each week, that is a significant chunk of my time being dedicated and spent to doing this, which is fantastic for me, really. It could have been the opposite. It could have been far too big of a goal. It could have been too much, I've been overwhelmed, and I could have just stopped and, and failed at it or failed at my goal. But it's provided something really stable for me to try and do. I love my PhD and I love what I do during the day, but it is high stress sometimes and it's very intense 
at other times and sometimes you are left such to your own devices that you have no structure whatsoever and that can really throw you and I'm just so grateful that I have found something my hobby or something that I do that first of all can provide structure by this weekly videos and second of all that I love so much I get to spend all day doing what I like and even if I have a bad day I can come home and do what I love my my vision and the, and the exciting thing with this channel is my vision and goal is not going to stop it's not going to stop with the fact that I've posted every video for a year I want to up the content 95% of the videos I've created I'm proud of there have been some weeks where I've just kind of chucked something together to make sure that I've met the goal which is going to be expected because that's always going to happen but 95% of the time I really enjoy it but I'm ready to push it further documentary series is one example of that it's one example where I am pushing uh, what I do because that is really takes some planning and timing and lots of intensive effort to create those but I have other ideas and other series that I'm trying to introduce and I'm really trying to provide you guys with the best content that I can produce uh, within the time budget that I have and I'm really excited that the next year I'm hoping to just do more and make it bigger and make it better and I know now that I have the foundation of, of skills and I've learned them that I have more time to spend on you know, ramping up the content and doing as best as I can to bring you guys some awesome stuff so the last thing I want to say is thank you all for your support thank you for watching it really means a lot that you if you like it or you don't like it or just the fact that you took the time to watch it and give me feedback and let me know that you like rock pooling and I really just hope that a couple of you guys out there are inspired to go and do it yourself because that's the whole point. The entire reason I'm doing this is to show you guys that right on our doorstep there is amazing, amazing marine life that you can just reach literally with your hands and, and just learn and think it's amazing because it's something I love so much and I couldn't imagine my life without rock pulling it and, all, and I just think it's so important and it's, it helps your mental state and it's helped my mental state and it's just, you know, I'm never ever, ever not surprised by our oceans. They are incredible, amazing places just ready to be out there and to be explored. So thank you so much and don't forget that I'm always on Twitter and YouTube and stuff if you guys have any questions or any want any advice or you want to see some content and you want to see things happen in the next year then let me know send me what you would like to see and I will totally definitely try and work it in because I'm doing it because I like it but I want to make content that you guys want to like so if you have any feedback or you know have any ideas yourself send them over if you want to collaborate send them over i am totally ready for this next year to be adventurous and awesome and to do as many things with as many people as possible and just really you know get this channel going and just share it as much as i can so thank you guys so so very much for just a wonderful wonderful year and here is two year number two Hopefully, I'll have posted every week in the next year too. And who knows? We'll see what happens uh, over the course of the next 12 months. Have a fantastic week, guys. See you next week.